Welcome, welcome this week's YouTube Live by Credit Suite. Uh, just giving you all the information and data that you need to know as a business owner so that you can grow your business and your business credit profile. This week, is uh, we, we bring to you 10 mind-blowing simple steps any entrepreneur can take to raise business credit scores. Again, all sponsored by Credit Suite. Uh, don't forget to subscribe in our channel. Always putting up uh, uh, new information every week. And of course, uh, don't forget to uh, uh, click on the notification button so that you can get up-to-date information on the latest and the greatest when it comes down to business credit. So let's dive into the details again of nine, 10 mind-blowing simple steps any entrepreneur can take to raise business credit scores. Uh, obviously, uh, our, our CEO Ty Crandall is uh, has been in the uh, in, in the business credit building space uh, for years and uh, and bringing greatest information here. We're always educating and empowering business owners. Uh, so don't forget to check out his book on Amazon Business Credit Decoded. Uh, and you can always reach out to us at 877-600-2487 uh, or you can email us with any questions at info at creditsuite.com. So business credit scores. All right, let's talk about that. Uh, these are scores that are in, in the business name. All right. When it comes down to consumer credit, what you find is TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. When it comes down to the business world, the major player here is Dun & Bradstreet, then follows the Equifax, and then, of course, Experian. So business credit scores. It's a, a business builds its own credit profile and credit score. Believe it or not, it does not have to be tied to your credit personally. It is all done under the business EIN. Then the business will then qualify for great, greater credit. Obviously, by being able to set your business up credibly, fundable strong, lendable strong, this will allow you to build business credit. Uh, the business credit scores, this measures the business ability to pay and not the owner's ability to pay. All right. So when it comes down to business credit, it is it is looked at what your the, the company's ability to pay, not your personal credit or your personal uh, consumer reporting. Uh, and of course, most major business credit scores range anywhere from zero to 100. OK, opposed to a, a prime score in, in the business world or even personal, you may find that your personal score may be over 700 and that's considered to be prime. Uh, and it ranges anywhere from a 385 to about as close as possible to an 800 uh, or a little over 800. Uh, but um, your business credit score isn't an automatic thing that happens. It just doesn't. Right. You apply for a credit card through consumer. You may get the terms and conditions. You get your card in within two weeks. And guess what? Within 30 to 45 days that same creditor, that lending institution is reporting that trade line or that uh, that, that, that uh, credit experience to the major credit reporting agencies. So unlike for consumer credit scoring, you have to apply uh, and obtain, of course, an EIN, which is given by the IRS website. Of course, by going to irs.com forward slash uh, irs.com gov forward slash EIN, you can find that information. But the, one of the most important things to do is to get a DUNS number from Dun & Bradstreet, which usually has a tendency of, uh, of arri arriving within a few weeks. Usually it's a little sooner. Uh, what we've been seeing here is a, a little bit of a trend with Dun & Bradstreet. They're moving through the, the Dun DUNS number a little faster uh, than what they have done in the past, but it's usually about two weeks. Uh, and then, of course, you want to tally up three separate payment experiences. OK, with Dun & Bradstreet. And what that means is that based on the, the way that the algorithms and the formula works for Dun & Bradstreet and the way that business credit works, getting a total of three separate payment experiences, it, it will increase uh, the 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 uh, the risk of the business to uh, decrease the risk of the business so that you can increase your scores in the credit world. Okay, then of course Dun and Bradstreet starts tracking your business financial activity and they'll get you a paydex score. So if you hear the word paydex score uh, instead of uh, a credit score, Dun and Bradstreet uses the terminology of a paydex score, which allows you to uh, increase anywhere from anywhere from uh, 18 to as high as uh, 85 or sometimes even 90 on a paydex score. Uh, for other business credit reporting agencies, no payment experiences are necessary. So you always start with a failing business credit score because there is no payment history. Remember, when it comes down to payment behavior, payment experiences, trade lines, it's all it's, that's what's all going to generate that credit score that we want. Okay, very similar to uh, personal credit, 
But what you find is that the more payment experiences you have or trade lines that you have on your business credit report with great payment history, not so much inquiries, not so much on utilization, but more payment history and behavior, this is what really increases your paydex, your experience uh, score, or even your Equifax score. So you, you obviously you start with a failing score. And usually what we find is somewhere around that low to mid 20s. It's usually a failing score and obviously the risk meter that a lot of these lenders use, you're probably going to end up somewhere in that red, okay? Let's think about this. Like just a quick meter, right? You look at a meter, and it has maybe a, a color from, from red, then moves a little bit into yellow, and then all of a sudden it starts moving into the orange and, of course, obviously green. Just a little bit of insight information for you. When a banks are using int a, a, the internal scoring system to measure your risk factors in, in a business, they use a lot of the internal sc scoring system that determines where are you in the, uh, the credit building area. So with this meter, what happens is as you're a brand new business, as you don't have anything reporting on your business credit, you have a, a low failing score, what you will find is that you start tearing a little more to that red. Therefore, banks are only willing to provide you, or even vendor accounts are willing to provide you just maybe $500 or $1,000 just to start out with. But that's okay. As you continue to build more business credit, you will start seeing that meter move from that red and start getting more into a lower risk position where you start the, the colors start changing and now you see a better results higher limits more approvals so on and so forth okay so fortunately there's a lot you can do to raise your scores and i want to cover that here with you so let's uh, decode business credit scores a mathematical model generally used to uh, depict a business risk of going 90 days late on account within the next 12 months it defers from personal credit scoring system, which depicts risk over 24 months. So, that, so pay attention to that. When it comes down to business, when they when they focus on on what you've been paying on, what trade lines you have on there, and and how long it takes for this to cycle for it to actually impact your business credit, it's an average of about 12 months that they're grading. Opposed to personal credit, a lot of times they're using a 24 month cycle to be able to determine personal credit uh, eligibilities and of course terms and conditions that you're going to get approved from a lender so your business credit profile one of the things that we want to cover here is that is it is linked to your EIN of course not linked to your personal credit is the most crucial and important thing to understand so that you're not tying yourself to, uh, financially to the business and you allow the business to go on its own two feet and build business credit the way it was intended to be Okay, a business credit score depicts how likely the business is to default on payments. Again, going back to that risk meter, banks are determining to see, okay, if we provide them any type of terms, how much will it be? How long is, are, is it going to take them to pay down this debt? And are they even going to pay us back? Okay, do they have the pedigree to be able to say, okay, I'm generating revenue, I'm doing this, I'm making moves, I'm scaling my business, moving it to the next level. Do I have the, the right pedigree to be able to get in with the bank and, and say, yes, I'll take a 10, 50, 100,000 thousand dollar term from you and of course uh, I, 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 I can't afford to pay back right that's the most important thing so it has nothing to do with how the business owner pays his or her own bills either utility your mortgage your car payment your revolving accounts it's more on the legibility of the business and how that business is going to cover the bills that it need that it needs to cover so all credit reporting agencies show multiple business credit scores to evaluate different forms of risk. All right, let's get into that. These scores are used by credit issuers, lenders, suppliers, vendors, and other who typically extend credit to business. Not limited to contract, like government contracts, okay? They sometimes can report on some of the activities that, that you're working with them on. It all depends if you're in trucking, if you're in a, a, you know, a clinical research or whatever the case is, they may provide you terms and may report how you perform based on the money that they provided you. Uh, there is no Fair Credit Reporting Act for business. So right off the bat, I want to be very clear with you. A lot of people think that they can treat business credit the same way they do personal, but that is a big mistake because when it comes down to consumer credit and you apply for something, it, it, there's certain laws that these banks have to follow and abide by in the business world that goes out the window automatically. So again, there is no Fair Credit Reporting Act for business. Creditors and vendors are under no obligation to tell you which scores they are relying upon. 
So how do we figure this out, right? That's the most important thing, and we'll cover that along the uh, uh, this video. But one of the other things here is that I will also want to make uh, a very clear is that anyone can pull your business credit report. Going back to a lot of the the, uh, the business owners that come to us to help them and assist them on, on obtaining credit, they will find out very quickly, especially if they're working on government contracts, that they're certain agencies are pulling their business credit report to determine if they even want to do business with them okay listen to that for a second so now you own a consulting group or maybe you own a clinical research company or maybe a trucking company or a real estate company and you find that people want to do business with you the way that they can determine if you pay your bills or maybe you render the services that you do is by simply pulling your paydex Experian or equifax whatever a choice that they decide to go with in addition to which i'm not really going to talk too much in details on on uh, on this uh, data gathering company called lexus nexus a lot of companies Companies are using LexisNexis to find out what the company has been doing in the last so many years that it's been in business. In addition to that, they're also looking at Better Business Bureau to determine if you're a good company to work with. And of course, we always heard of Angie's List to determine if you try to do something to a customer or you didn't do something for a customer. All this information and data is being gathered, believe it or not. But again, anyone can pull your business credit report. So it's very important that just like your personal credit, you got to keep business credit squeaky clean and constantly pulling your business credit report to see where you're at, who's reporting uh, uh, information that is not accurate so that you can be with the best foot forward anytime you conduct business or want to do business with uh, an agency or company or other organizations. So with no applicable Fair Credit Reporting Act, you may never know who's looking at your business credit report. So that can be not just vendors or even lenders or creditors, but also competitors, clients, and business prospects that want to do business with you. So the three big credit reporting agencies for business credit is one, the biggest is Dun & Bradstreet, all right, just for business. Then we have Experian and Equifax that handle both consumer and business. So one of the most important things that you have to recognize is that with Experian and Equifax stepping up to the game and up, stepping up to the plate and saying, okay, we have hand, have a, a, a tremendous handle on consumer. What we want to do here at this point in time is be able to offer a side-by-side -side comparison of what your personal and your business is, but they're getting into the game of business credit. Well, they've been around for a while, but they are now more a little more direct stating, yes, we are here to report business activities on the business credit report and of course you have smaller credit reporting agencies that aren't, that aren't checked as often uh, which there's many out there there's a lot of companies out there that are data gatherers and are trying to get into the space of the business world but please be on, on top of pulling your business cre credit so that you know where you stand so when you start bidding on projects if you're working in the uh, for government contracts or you're trying to do business with another company you have your business credit where it needs to be so the big three matter a lot and they're very important to understand that Dun and Bradstreet Experian and Equifax are the biggest players out there when it comes down to business credit reporting agencies okay uh, there's other two to con uh, more to consider okay one of the big ones that are out there nowadays is FICO SBSS uh, which is a combination of course that has to do with your personal and also with business but 30% uh, uh, of it uh, is the amounts owed, 10% is new credit, 15% of length of credit history, 10% is uh, credit mix, and of course payment history is another 35%. But FICO SBSS, Small Business Scoring Service at CreditSafe, their scores range anywhere from 0 to 300. OK, and the important thing here is that a lot of times these banks are using this as an internal scoring system, something to 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 compare to something to be able to gather information and see with the temperature of the vital signs of your business. OK, so this reflects likelihood of the applicant paying bills timely. OK, this is the applicant yourself, consumer credit, personal and business credit history, plus financial data go into the total score of calculations. CreditSafe includes financial trade payment data. It also includes lease payments, payments to business credit cards, term loan payments, other debt payments made by business. And this is very important for you to understand because there's a lot of information that is going to them before a bank determines any type of eligibility for your business. So what goes into the score? The credit reporting agencies all use slightly different methods, and that's okay. 
right? Because depending on where you go, who you're applying for, maybe one bank of, you know, one bank like Bank of America, JP Morgan, Chase, or Capital One may use all three. Some of them may only use two, Dun & Bradstreet Experience. Some of them may only use Equifax, and that's okay. But the most important thing to know is that they just they just weight the different the different types of scoring systems that are out there. Knowing how the scores are calculated shows you how to raise your scores most effectively. Okay. Uh, before we move on to the next page, just want to let you know, please subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you can get constant notifications on the latest and the greatest information that we're putting forth. Uh, so Dun & Bradstreet score, scoring criteria, they look at bankruptcies and liens. Okay, so if you're trying to obtain funding for your business, if you're trying to obtain revolving lines, unsecured business funding, SBAs, or whatever the case is, one of the major things of a turndown that they're looking for is bankruptcies and liens that are very, very recent. Okay, now we understand 10, 15, 20 years ago, I get it. Great payment history since that incident. Yeah, they're a little more in tune in providing you terms. But if you have something that you're coming out of a bankruptcy or you recently uh, have a, a, a t big liens or even a lot of times um, uh, child support, that may deter your you from obtaining any type of business lending. But Dun & Bradstreet, they also look at lawsuits against your company, your credit card payments, your bill payments. Uh, and to get a paid score, a business needs at least three trade accounts reporting to their file. This is what generates a score. This is what starts to move the uh, the uh, the agent the credit reporting agencies into a direction of reporting, and then of course increase your score so that you can get where you need to get to. Uh, it usually takes up to 90 days for these trades to report and scores to be established. Unlike personal credit, just like I spoke a little earlier, if you report or if you purchase something or either you got a trade line or experience, what ends up happening is 30 to 45 days because there is consumer uh, a federal consumer uh, act. They're able to now take that information and automatically report that information to the credit bureaus. When it comes down to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax in the business world, it can take up to 90 days for these trade re to report and for your score to establish. So the business credit score itself is calculated by using as many as 875 payments. That's big, right? So it's weighted average with more weight given to trade accounts that report higher amounts of credit exceeded. Okay. The other thing is it gives less weight to trade accounts that report lower dollar amounts of credit. Okay. The other thing is here to keep paid X scores up. If you can only pay one bill, pay the biggest one first. Don't go after the small stuff because you think you can maybe uh, get rid of it. The goal here is if you want to increase those scores, you got to pay the bigger bills so that you can knock down all those the, the higher utilization or either the higher loans in terms that you obtain out there. Past performance and bill payment is a main driver of this number, ranging again anywhere from 1 to 100. The higher the score, the lower the risk, right? A business can get a good business uh, paid ex credit score by ensuring payments are made promptly to suppliers and vendors, which one of the things that I always tell my business owners, you find the opportunity so when the statement is already done, when the statement is already created from that vendor, from that lender, from that institution, you wanna have that one to five day window to pay that bill on time. Never let it linger close to that 30 day mark because Banks can report on day 31 as soon as day 30, 31 and put you down for a negative on your business credit report. Okay, now let's talk about Experian Commercial. With Experian Commercial, they have a large database. They apply their own analytic software, which is a little unorthodox from the way that Dun & Bradstreet or even Equifax does it. But the reports include public records, scoring, trade information, financial history, court judgment, UCC filings. A lot of times we, we go on here and, and get ourselves a line of credit or maybe a term loan or an SBA. Some of these banks will put a UCC filing on that on your business credit file until that loan has been satisfied fully to all applicable terms that you've agreed upon. Okay. So when it comes down to the experience scoring criteria, which is called IntelliScore, by the way, experience sometimes goes by IntelliScore Plus, which is the way that they, uh, like Dun & Bradstreet call is, uh, calls it uh, a paid score. They use in Telescore Plus, it's graded on his, historical behavior. So payment history, 5 to 10% of total score. Current payment status, trade balances, and percent of accounts delinquent, 50 to 60% of score. 
all right that's huge so if the trade balances and percent of accounts are delinquent that's 50 or 60 percent of your score credit utilization not so heavily weighted like in the in the in the personal world obviously you have a hundred thousand dollars in credit cards you use ninety thousand dollars of it that's going to really tank your personal credit but when it comes down to business credit it's only weighted at a 10 to 15 percent of the total score Company profile, age of business, industry risk, and size of business access by the number of employees, 5 to 10% of total score. Okay, they're also measuring 10 to 15% total scores based on derogatory items, example, collections, liens, judgments, and bankruptcies. That's all graded in that whole algorithm that they have in place. All right, IntelliScore, the dep uh, uh, depiction of IntelliScore, the score basis includes number of trade experiences. Right, the more experiences and trade lines that you have on your credit report, the better you're going to have uh, the opportunity to get more lending based on the fact that you have a full body business credit report. Uh, and I want you to reflect on this a little bit, right? When we were uh, maybe at the age of 18 and we wanted to purchase our first vehicle, well, we walked into a dealership and the first thing that a salesperson told us was, do you have a parent or somebody that can co-sign for you? Unless, of course, that, that, that uh, lending institution or that manufacturer, captive lender, said, well, we have a first time buyer program. We just need to know that you're in college and that you're going to have a degree at the end and then we'll put you on a first time uh, basis. If you have a job that you've had since you were 16, but a lot of times there's a lot more documents and a lot of proof that you have to have. And because the body of your personal credit, there was not really full and you haven't been on the personal credit too long uh, or reporting agencies too long, then they were always suggesting that you bring somebody in to co-sign. It's just almost the same thing when it comes down to your business credit report. If you don't have much reflecting or showing on your business credit report, well, guess what? They're always going to ask for you to have a personal, for you as a principal of the company to personally guarantee it. And obviously the goal here is to not to, right? So outstanding balances and payments habits, they're looking at credit utilization and trends over time, public records, recency, frequency, and dollar amount. They're also looking at demographics like years on file, SIC codes, which is crucial. If you're in a high risk industry and you have a SIC code or you're in a restricted industry, a lot of times if you're in a restricted industry, if you're, if you're creating guns and ammo and all that kind of stuff, that's a restricted industry. If you're in the casino business, you're in a very high risk, uh, a restricted industry. Uh, so demographics is really weighted uh, on this whole process when it comes down to the telescore. Uh, and of course, when it comes down to Equifax scoring criteria, they collect utility account information. So utility bills, they, they collect uh, cell phone bills, uh, even sometimes car payments, uh, trade vendor data, public records, example, bankruptcies, judgment, lawsuits, and liens, information from small business financial exchange, which is a, a really big one out there that uh, they also do data gathering. Uh, and, and that's how the Equifax uses their scoring criteria to determine eligibility. Uh, and of course, FICO SBSS scoring criteria. These are one of the biggest players that are coming on board right now and you're seeing them a little more aggressively inching in more into the uh, the, uh, the business world. Uh, but FICO takes into account, uh, among other things, personal credit information. So where a lot of times we're not willing to sign for the business because we, there's there's no need to, right? But a lot of times if the business doesn't have any credit, then what these banks are going to pull is their FICO SBSS scoring uh, to determine eligibility. So what they're saying is if your business does not have any type of business, we need somebody to back that business up. So how do they determine that you that your business is going to pay, right? So what do they do? They'll pull your, your FICO, which is a, a, a merge personal and business credit report to see eligibility terms. Now, if you're in the, you know, maybe lower scores in the 500, maybe lower 600s, well, that's not going to be, uh, you know, something that for eligibility on greatest terms. So always working on your personal credit and making sure that it's up to date, has all the data information, that you have accurate information on there, that if things that from years ago, you want to make sure you get them removed because obviously we know anytime that you pick up the phone and you pick up, uh, you know, you have a collector on the other line from a bill from 10 years ago, they reinstate that same date and they update the information on your credit profile. And then something as small as a blemish, you've been paying your bills great for the last five or six years. And a blemish like this, sometimes if we're applying for an SBA, one of two things is going to happen. They're going to decline because they're going to find out that that's a very recent payment history that's derogatory or default. Or they're going to say you need to pay down that bill and negotiate that. And then, of course, that slows down the process of obtaining the funding that you need. But FICO SBSS also 
check business credit history, the age of business and the years in business, financial details like cash flow and revenue, okay? It's all about internal scoring system. What we understand is that most of the time when it comes down to an SBA, the SBA will guarantee that, okay, as long as you have a 140 score it, with, it, with uh, uh, you know, their programs, well, what ends up happening is a lot of these banks want to see a 160 or above. So in making sure that your FICO SBSS is on point, that your credit is good, and also that your business credit is even on point, the goal here is to be able to now open up new windows opportunities with other types of lending and alternative lenders that are out there, private investor, hedge funds, and SBAs, and all kinds of different lending opportunities based on the fact that your personal credit is good and, of course, that the business is even better. Okay, uh, so what can lower a business credit score? And let's talk, talk on that very, uh, very brief here. Collections, just like personal. If you have collections out there, you got to jump on them immediately. You got to find a way to negotiate on these things. You got to find a way to get yourself on a payment plan. A uh, derogatory th- uh, uh, you know, mark on your personal, even your business credit will really hold you back from a lot of funding opportunities that are out there. Obviously, liens, when it comes down to tax liens, uh, even child support, even liens that the other institutions have put on you because you didn't render your, your services, judgments, bankruptcies, or other types of derogatory public records, including status, recency frequency and dollar amounts increased trend and slow payments of obligations okay so if you're seeing that you're having slow payments and you're waiting to day 30 to make sending the bill through snail mail obviously that bill is not going to get there on time obviously that bill is not going to be get processed on time and it may take two to four weeks before they're processing deposits your check your money order or whatever form of payment you sent in and then of course what ends up happening is now you have a, a late payment on your business credit report now what happens is one late payment will really tear you down from obtaining the best favorable terms that are out there. So let's just say that that bank had a 0% financing program that you would have qualified for because of that one small little dent on your credit report that can really truly bring everything sideways and it will eliminate the best terms as possible for you and your business. Uh, also, increase in number of business credit inquiries or applications generated by business owner uh, uh, you know, or the business. Okay, if you see that you're p- applying too much and you have you've applied for 20 trade lines, but you only have five reporting on your business credit report, that's a question that's going to be raised at that at the time that you know that you're closing on on a deal. And and what's going to happen is uh, think about it as a lender. If you see all these inquiries, right? Maybe you went to go shop for a vehicle and they shot you all over the place, right? Farming your information to every lender that's available that's out there. So what ends up happening is that that information, these banks will look at that and say, wait are you applying for 10 vehicles or did you just need one or maybe you're looking to uh, you know bid on a home or a project but you use maybe to try to get a, a HELOC or maybe you try to get yourself a uh, you know t- some type of other type of lending program and they run your information through a lot of different sources it, th- these banks are gonna ask what is going on here because they want to make sure that you're not trying to apply for credit in a million places on the same day because you're trying to uh, obtain two hundred and fifty thousand dollars one bank gives you fifty the other one gives you another fifty the other one gives you another fifty thousand dollars you want to make sure that all that information is in place so yes increase the number of business credit inquiries on application generated by business or the owner can really deter you from the best terms and conditions that you want to obtain Again, the number of trade experiences, balances, outstanding payment habits, credit utilization, and trends over time. This is crucial. This is very important here for you. Uh, Short uh, TIB, line of credit, or SIC code, size of business, and other demographic data. These are certain things that can really bring down your score. And the reason why is because there's certain restricted industries that banks don't not want to do business with. And therefore, they will completely bring down your score based on the certain risk that you are uh, in the type of industry that you're in and the type of lending programs that they do not want to provide you any type of terms. So what can raise a business credit score? Okay, generally the reverse of what can lower a business credit score, okay, uh, is some of these steps take, take time right uh obviously we know that raising credit score is very crucial but a lot of these things take time you have to be patient great business credit can be built quickly but you have to be able to understand that there's a process if you apply for six trade lines right now and you now uh, they've invoiced you you've paid your first bill keep in mind you may not see a reporting on all of them 
in 60 days. So you got to be able to give it that time for it to breathe, for it to get to that 90 day period where you now see all these accounts reporting on your business credit. Okay. But you got to be patient on this. All right. Uh, it, it's not immediate. This thing doesn't happen overnight. Again, consumer credit, there's certain laws that protect you as a consumer, and there's certain things that, that the banks have to abide by in order for them to continue to be in business and stay legal as possible. So first, let's start with biggest thing you can do, okay? So in order for you to raise your business credit score, step number one, pay on time, every time, it hands down. One to five day window, make sure that you're sending your check or you're taking care of maybe an online bill pay if they offer that or whatever the case is. That way you can get the most favorable funding by paying all bills on time. This means a paid -ex score of 80, which is a perfect score in the business world. A Equifax credit risk score of 90 or better. Uh, a, a good FICO SBS, uh, SBSS score will be driven in part by on-time payments. Okay, remember the internal scoring system that a lot of times you're using is anywhere from zero to 300, but they usually want to see you as a minimum of 140, but a lot of the banks are now st starting to shuffle into the 160 range for FICO FBSS. So for Experian, historical behavior, payment history is 5 to 10% of your total score. Okay, for SBA loans, you won't be approved with FICO SBSS score under 140, not happening. But the typical cutoff can be as high as 160. Again, it ranges from zero to 300. So below that, you will probably be denied due to being too high of a risk. Again, going back to that high risk meter, these banks use this to determine eligibility if you can afford to pay back on time. If you have the, the, the money and, the, and you're generating the revenue to be able to pay back what you've obtained through the terms and conditions that they provided you. So chances are good that, that the, the SBA lender won't even submit your application to SBA if your scores doesn't even meet the threshold. Okay, how well does your company pay its outstanding invoices? Okay, that's a big, huge factor when it comes down to obtaining ter terms. And how has your business payment performance changed over time? Are you getting better with credit? Are you in, uh, receiving more uh, approvals, higher amounts? Instead of the thousand, five thousand, now you're into the fifty, hundred. 300, half a million dollars into loans. These are some of the things that they use to determine if they want to even provide you and stair step you into a, or graduate you into a higher and bigger program with higher terms, or even a nice line of credit available for your business. So raise business credit score, step number two, start with vendor credit tier. All right. For us business owners that have been in business for over 10, 15, 20 years, we always forget that the most important part of this whole process is you have to start from scratch. Even if you've been in business that long, just because you have an American Express under your business name and also attached to you, just because you have maybe a $50,000 revolving uh, account with a, with a maybe Capital One or whatever the case is, that doesn't make you an eligible candidate or business owner to go on ahead and get yourself a $100,000 loan. Just because you have those two accounts, it doesn't work that way. There's no graduating program like that uh, in, in, in the business world. Yes, in personal, absolutely, all day. Keep in mind, you're personally guaranteeing it right? Banks are in the business to, to provide you terms so that they can make money off of interest rate. But when it comes down to business credit, a lot of banks don't even want to talk to you unless you have a certain amount of trade lines reporting on your business credit. So the vendor credits here consists of true starter vendors. They will extend credit when other businesses won't, when other companies and lending institutions won't. Here are three of our favorites. And I want to share this here with you because it's crucial and important that you understand that vendor credit is the first step to to make sure that now you start building that business credit profile. All right, think about it as a house. We're building a house. We're laying down the foundation, which is called credibility, right? So you have a business name, you have a corporate entity, you have an EIN, you have a business address or virtual address for some of you that work from home. We have, we're updated with 401 directory. We have a phone number, a, a number that you can actually view in business directory, not a cell phone, not a Google number that they, uh, that they just 15 other business or people used to own but a true business uh, listing number, a website, a corporate email, not Gmail, not Ymail, not Hotmail, but a true info at such and such services, okay? A, a business bank account so that when you obtain the terms that you need, they need to deposit this not in a personal account, but a business account, 
okay? You have licensing if you're a professional and your, your state requires you to have certain licensing in place, you need that. And of course, all this information gets updated with business listings. So when the banks start pulling your 411 or even want to Google your business, it's all updated looking very pretty on search engines like uh, Bing, uh, Google, or whatever the case is. So I want to share here this with you, which is our uh, three favorite ones, which is called Uline. Quill and Granger Industrial Supply. Now, a lot of people come to over to us and say, well, you know what? I'm in consulting. I'm a psychologist. I'm a doctor. Uh, I own an OBGYN. I, why do I need this? Well, the most important thing is that if you get to a point where you can establish a little bit of trade lines with them and buy things that you would normally buy, maybe in the local supermarket, Costco, BJ's, or some things that you can use for your house or the office, these are the three major ones that you can use right here because they will provide you a little bit of, of terms. They're not going to be very high limits but the neat thing is about it about it is that they'll start reporting immediately with just a fraction of the amount that you have to spend with them you don't have to spend hundreds and thousands or thousands of dollars with them it's you're just generating a score by having these three vendor accounts which are the best start of vendors accounts that are out there available in the market okay so what you want to do is once you have these, you want to develop payment experiences for your business. And that's what you're doing here. This means using the credit or financing. It means paying everything back. So if you go through Uline and you get yourself maybe some shipping boxes or you get yourself some shipping labels or, or maybe you go through another company and get yourself something, uh, you know, a thermostat or something as simple as that or order paper for the office. These are small things that you're already going to purchase why not go through them they'll invoice you fairly quickly well you'll pay that info that, that invoice within that one to five day uh a window and of course obviously what's going to ha end up happening is this information is going to start reporting immediately to your business credit report you want to make sure you pay on time and in full that's why you don't want to go out there and, and obtain a thousand dollar limit from them and then just go whack the account for a thousand dollars because next month you're going to have to pay it within that 30 day sequence OK, you got to make sure you pay it every single t every single time on time. OK, raise business credit score. Step number four, unleash the power of trade references. OK, trade references are payment experiences will matter the most if a creditor reports to the CRAs. All right. Credit reporting agencies. But even non-reporting creditors can help. All right. If you ask for a trade reference. They can help you and assist you in, in, in boosting up your scores the way that you need it to be. OK, so if you're working, if you're in construction and you've been working with a lumber yard and they've been providing you all the services that they that, you know, you need and all the equipment and all the material. Well, guess what? Simply just walk up to them and say, listen, I, I've been doing business with you for a while. Can you help me start reporting some of this stuff to Dun & Bradstreet Experian and Equifax? You'd be very surprised. It's as simple as them writing an invoice and sending it out and saying such and such company has been paying us this. They've, they've given us this amount of money and limits. We've given them $100,000 limits. You'd be very surprised because you are paying cash uh, to them, they may be able to report this information and help you out in increasing your trade references so that you can get in with a lot of the other lenders that are looking for these references. Uh, they go beyond the numbers. It's very important to understand that. Because a lot of times when you're trying to establish credit, uh, they might even want to ask you, hey, show me some invoices. So it's very important to hold on to a lot of this, these invoices and these, these uh, receipts that you've been paying certain uh, companies or vendor accounts that are not reporting. But you can say, listen, look what I've done. I've been paying this. I've been doing this. I pay cash. And it, they might be able to use as a reference so that they can obtain, you can obtain the terms that you need. One of the other things that you want to do is obviously check your business credit reports regularly. And I mentioned that a little earlier. Checking your business credit report is just like checking your personal credit report constantly. You want to make sure that you're in the know at all times. Sometimes information gets cross-checked and sometimes you'll end up with a company that had a very similar name to you at another state or they closed the business down and then you have data and information that's not accurate. So you want to make sure that you're pulling your business credit report because information is incomplete or missing altogether. This is going to be very hard in order for you to now dispute this information it may take weeks or months to be able to get this information removed always update your records with all credit reporting agencies when there are changes name changes address changes telephone number changes uh, even website changes you want to make sure that this information is accurate a lot of these lenders use a lot of artificial intelligence to determine eligibility so not all the time are you talking to a live human being to take the application of 
the phone, or if you go to Lowe's and, they, and it's not, there's not a representative right there. So a lot of times they use a, 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 a artificial intelligence computer to determine these, uh, these factors to provide you terms. So you want to make sure that your information and your records are updated constantly with any moves or changes that you do to your business. These kind of changes can be in ownership. Okay, if you sell the company, there's a new liability uh, to, to transfer to the new owners. You want to make sure that that information is up to date. Overall number of employees. If you're growing, you started with three, now you have 15, 20. You want to make sure this information is, is checked and accurately input into the system because the more employees that you have, the more benefit. It looks like you're growing, you you have payroll, this marketing, you're scaling the business. It looks like a positive, well vital signs business owner okay you also want to make sure that the business entity is a corporation llc sometimes referred to as disregarded entity you can't operate and a business under sole proprietor and try to obtain funding keep in mind when you fill out as a sole, a sole proper partnership you were using your social security to establish the business so guess what there's no bank in, in, in the world that's going to want to provide you any type of terms without you not signing right and that's what's important about this so business entity you want to make sure that you're a corporation or a disregarded entity uh, as an example locations new addresses all this information needs to get uh, updated with the credit reporting agencies okay now we move on to step number six run your company financially uh, financially responsibly this means retaining enough assets to cover business downturns okay having enough money in the bank stashed away to cover payroll to cover things that that are, are that your business is going to require it means not overspending so you have to be able to treat whatever credit you get responsibly don't go on ahead and get yourself a uh, uh you know a higher loan amount because you think that you're forecasting for a higher third quarter whatever the case is you got to be able to treat it just like you treat your personal credit responsibly it means not taking on more debt than your company can handle and of course, DMB in particular looks at chances a company will go bankrupt within a set time period. So this is important to you so that you know that these banks are now looking at you from a different angle. They're looking to see if your business if your business does have the capabilities of going bankrupt or not paying back some of the lenders that they have on their profile. So take steps to keep your business finances out of the red. All right. It is crucial. Red means no go. In the black, we're in the positive, right? Pay rents and utilities on time. Obviously, we know from the score module, there are credit reporting agencies that will look at this information. If your business can't, talk to your providers, okay? Negotiate something. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait till the last second to try to negotiate on terms based on the fact that you're really deep in the hole here. So it's all about making sure that you talk to your providers and make sure that the information is updated and that you say, listen, I'm, I'm running a little behind. Let's work something out. They'll make work with you as best as possible because obviously they want to get paid. Uh, maybe you can work out a payment plan with them. Consider ways to cut expenses if you just can't keep up with the, the terms that you already have in place. And of course, step number eight, stay out of legal hot water. OK, you can't prevent every lawsuit, however. Uh, but if your business always honors its contracts and obligation, you want to make sure that you stay away from all types of legal battles. It's going to it's very costly. Not only does it, it make you stay up at night, but it's very expensive. OK, that will go a long way to staying out of the court system. Make sure that you render the services that you promise. The other legal issue is accidents. If you have a couple of company uh, drivers or you have uh, some salespeople that have their own company cars, keep your workplaces clean and obstruction free you want to make sure that there's no other types of accidents or anything happening you making sure that you're running motor vehicle reports and backgrounds on your on your employees to ensure that they're not drinking on the job or maybe they have some incidents when they run the motor vehicle report on your on your uh yeah, on their background. Uh, and of course, keeping the workplace clean and obstruction free to ensure that there's no accidents in the workplace. And now you're also finding yourself with a, a disability case or whatever the, the case is. Uh, get a risk assessment done by your insurer. Uh, they're in business of loss prevention and you should be too. All right. Uh, your business has two kinds of codes. All right. And let's talk about that here very, very briefly here, uh, which is knowing the codes. SIC, which is the standard industrial classification and the NAICS, which is the North American Industry Classification System. Industry can be either restricted or high risk. OK, you can be in a high risk industry 
that is uh, maybe let's say trucking or real estate or uh, dry cleaning. Uh, these are type of high risk industries. And of course you have restricted industries that eh, unfortunately, if you're in it, if you're in uh, you know, building ammo and, uh, and, uh, and, and manufacturing guns, it, unfortunately in, in casinos, unfortunately it's a restricted industries that a lot of times these banks are a bit scared and do not want to do business with you. So with that being said, in general, restricted and high risk industries have some things in common right? They may be high risk of injury on the job, or the industry may engage in a lot of cash transactions like casinos. This is true no matter what the safety record of a particular business is or the majority of its transaction types, okay? So when it comes down to restricted and high risk industries, per the SIC, these are restricted industries, energy, oil training, uh, or petroleum extraction or production, pawn shops. Much of these uh, cannabis industries is restricted. Uh, per the SIC, the following industries are high risk. Auto, recreational, vehicle, or boat sales. Uh, I know some of you out there that are in auto sales and, uh, and also do wholesaling and, and uh, export and import. Uh, unfortunately, that's an industry that these banks consider uh, high risk just for the simple fact that a higher risk of these loans or a higher amount of these loans are going default. Okay, So past experiences with these lenders, they have a bad, bad taste about your industry, but it's based on the fact that the previous ones that tried to obtain funding they didn't do so well and perform well in their payment backs. Um, the other thing here is travel agencies. These, com these companies uh, and organizations are subject to stricter underwriting guidelines. Doesn't mean that you cannot obtain funding, but what it means is that you're going to go through a little bit of a stricter underwriting process than you would normally if you were not in a high risk or restricted industry. So when it comes down to it, you have to be honest when you choose yours, okay? Uh, but there's no reason to choose the riskiest code. So it's very important that you understand that there's a lot of different SIC codes that are out there on NAICS codes that are out there that yes, maybe you are in real estate, but may you are you a consultant? Absolutely. You consult all day, not only on the property, but also on the lending part of things. And you're in, consult in consulting. If you're in, a, in another type of a, a industry in, in trucking, which is high risk, then, you know, obviously it's there's no way to go around it, especially when you're trying to name your business. Uh, you know, I transport or, uh, you know, uh, you know, hot shots uh, or, you know, trucking company or whatever it is. The goal here is that if, if it's a less risky might one might apply you can go for that okay and keep the name of a high risk or restricted industry out of your business name nobody wants to loan money to uh you know uh james trucking services nobody wants to 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 loan money directly to a person it has to be an entity so having these things in place will really help you in building business credit profile but also your credibility is crucial your business name can't be so in your face i'm in a restricted industry it has to be something that is you can keep within the guidelines of the s I see NAICS and make sure that you can um, build business credit based on what you have. So for example, we take for uh, Chico's bail bonds can be renamed as Chico's. This is the above uh, board and, and, and honest as possible. Okay. When it comes down to step number 10 to increase your most recent high credit use, credit issues, issuers determine how high credit limit to issue based on how much you spend monthly and how recently you spent it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Write that down. Credit issuers determine how high a credit limit to issue based on how much you spend monthly and how recently you spent it. So get approved for limits more than 10 times of your existing limits just by monitoring increasing your recent high credit use. Okay, make sure that you understand and use your credit often so that you can get more credit with every approval. When you try to go obtain funding, but you know you don't use what you have, why should they give you any more money than what you're asking for. You have to use what you have consistently. Be able to use that so that now if these accounts that are in the business name, it's this fuel that you're using, put it on the card, pay it off in 30 days. Keep that momentum going. It's the formula that actually increases your credit score as you continue to move through this journey called business credit building. Okay, uh, and of course, bonus step number 11, I also want to tell you about tame your utilization percentage. Don't go too crazy. Obviously, if you have a $1,000 limit, don't go spend 1200 because you have late payments or any types of additional fees that are in there. So credit issuers want to see that you're using your credit, but maintaining it wisely. 
okay? But you can really build a tremendous credit profile by borrowing what you, you know, paying back what you borrow, and of course, keeping that consistently in that 12 month cycle, like, just like I explained to you a little earlier, all right? Also monitor these statute approval decisions. Get approved for limits more than 10 times of your existing limits, just by monitoring, responsibly managing utilization. Okay. Also, the other thing here we want to talk about is, is step number 12, address any adverse actions. You never want to get yourself into an, uh, a negative bind here when it comes down to lenders. Negative payment history can diminish your ability to get loans and credit cards, hands down. If you are going and borrowing money and then you can't pay on time or you're defaulting on some of these loans, guess what? The chances of you obtaining any more, you're, ha you're going to have to sit down and be benched for a little bit until you're able to show a little more good faith and responsibility on these trade lines that we have here. The other thing here is that you, it can increase the rates and payments on the credit and loans you do get, okay? Know which accounts are reporting adverse credit history. Then you can work with CRAs and credit issuers. Credit inaccuracies is very important as well to ensure that you have everything that you need to work it the right way. Okay, add more positive history to offset the negative. So if you have tax liens, you have this stuff and it's showing still on the credit report, well, guess what? Just start adding positive in there. The more positive, it will then increase that, that the, those scores again by adding more payment history and behavior on there. Uh, bonus step number 13 I want to cover with you is monitor your business credit. You never know what's going on unless you check. Okay, most of us have on our phone, Discover Card sends you a free uh, credit report. Uh, you know, Capital One has credit wise. On our phones, we have, uh, you know, uh, the Credit Karma. So we're always constantly in the know when it comes down to our personal credit. The same thing is what you want to mimic when it comes down to your business credit report. So you need to ensure that this information is accurate uh, and you, 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 you know, you're often too busy to check. Uh, you know, sometimes we're, we can't, um, we don't know where to. Obviously monitoring makes that easy and we make it affordable here. So if you wanna check your business credit report, we have a way that you can uh, check your business credit report through one of the software systems that we have. But it saves you 90% of what Experian Dun & Bradstreet charge. Instead of $149 a month for Dun & Bradstreet, $149 and $50 for Experian, what you wanna find is that we only charge you and you can have access to both for only $24 a month. That's a crazy deal that we offer here at Credit Suite. So all you have to do is really simple. I'm going to give you a second so you can take a picture of this or jot down the information, but www.creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring. Again, that website is www.creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring. So again, instead of paying $149 and then to Dun & Bradstreet and $50 for Experian, you can get both for only $24 a month. All right, so let's recap this here. Start with a Dun's number and three payment experiences to get a pay score. This is the only way that you're going to be able to, to drive the business and increase the credit scores that you need to move on to the next. New business core, uh, credit scores tend to be low. That's okay. Credit reporting agencies all have slightly deferring criteria for scoring, but the results are very close. But what improves one will improve them all. Start to improve your scores with on-time payments and responsible financial stewardship. Work with the vendor credit tiers to start getting payment experiences. Ask for trade references. Give CRAs, get, give the credit reporting agencies all the data that they request. Keep trade payments in line and try stay out of legal entanglements. Of course, address adverse actions or SICs and NAICS codes that may be keeping your scores down. Increase your most recent high credit use, but watch the utilization. Of course, monitor your business credit. We offer low cost monitoring of Dun & Bradstreet and Experian. It'll easily and quickly get financing, get access to every legitimate funding program in one place. You pay us no fees. Use our loan volume to get lower rates and fees. And of course, Business Blueprint to graduate to even better loans like SBA 504s. Never look for funding again because you use a one-stop shop and wherever we go, you can always come to us because we have a spread full of these lenders and our portfolio is very strong with them. But hey, we greatly appreciate the time and opportunity that you've given us here with hanging out with us on 10 mind-blowing simple steps any entrepreneur can take to raise business credit scores. Feel free to contact us for more information at 877-600-2487 or email us at info at creditsuite.com. And of course, as always, we greatly appreciate you subscribe to our channel and of course don't forget to hit the notification bell greatly appreciate you all and Hiram here checking out uh, with this week's uh, live YouTube live take care thank you and look forward to next time around